Now the next and the most important topic we will be looking at is a reflection API, right? So this topic is very, very important at terms you are working on a framework uh, designing project, right? And uh, you need to know the information of the classes you are using, the variables, the method name. Basically, using a reflection API, we can get the information of the class that includes variables, method name, constructor information, modifiers, right? Uh, anything that you need to know uh, from a class, you can get it with the help of reflection API. Right, so at times, let's say you are executing n number of test cases and you want to know the name of all the test cases being executed. You want to maintain a log file that could tell the information of test case uh, login executed, the test case uh, second executed, third executed. One way is that either you should try doing system out print telling. Uh, try printing the name of the test cases manually but let's assume we have 1000 test cases to execute so will you be adding all those information manually using system out print and you will not be doing it in that way right at the runtime you will be getting this information from your class that which class is called which method is called right which constructor is called so all this information will be captured automatically on the runtime itself using this reflection api we're going to understand more about what reflection api is and how it works let's uh, just create a, a package over here for reflection so i'll name it as reflection example Ref Reflection example. Right. Now let's say I'll, I'll create a class called as test and I'll add a main method. Now there are a couple of methods. Uh, let's say I create an object of this class t equal to new test, right? And uh, if I want to get the class name, I can say t dot get class dot get simple name so sim get simple name will actually gonna return me the class return the simple name of underlying class in the given source code this is a very simple example reflection is very easy to use right so if i print this thing and if i run this you're gonna see it actually prints your class name now normally we uh, are actually calling the same class within the same class so it won't make any sense to use this over here what we're going to do we'll create another class and i'll comment out this code from here right just be with me for some time you should be able to understand what exactly the importance of a reflection api in our project right now what I'll do, I'll uh, create an object of, uh, like I'll, I'll create another class and create, let's say home class and I'll gonna create an object of this test class over here. I'll add a main method over here and let's say I'll remove all these things from here and I'm gonna create an object of test class over here. I'll say test t equal to new test and I'll call the method test.getClass. Now you can see this get class is actually returning us something called as class, right? So get class will gonna return you an object of a class. A class is also a class in Java. So we're gonna create a, a reference. We'll say class class equal to this. Now this whole thing, we're gonna store it into the class uh, class reference. With the help of this reference, we can get any information out of this test class. Anything that you want to know about this test class, this reference will actually going to help you in doing that. So now if you want to get uh, the name of this class, you can simply say class dot get simple name and you'll print it and it will going to print out the class name for you. So I'll save this, run this, and it will tell you the class is test. Now the next thing that we're going to do, let's say I'll go inside test class and I'll create some methods. Let's say a method for uh, showing something, a method for adding something, a method for 
print thing something. I'm I'm not worried about the implementation right now. I just want to see uh, what reflection will gonna do with the methods. If I want to uh, get all the method names declared inside this class, I can simply say I can call one of the method of this uh, class object uh, by using this object reference. I can say class dot get declared methods and you can see it is returning me method array right method is another class right method is also a class in java so i can say method of an array type and i'll create an object reference array of methods equal to this and we need to import this method class now you can see method class is being imported through java lang reflect right so this is coming from reflections and if you want to print how many methods are there the count of methods you can say array dot uh, length right and you can print them it will tell you there are total three methods inside this class now if you want to print the method names like the way we printed the class name if you want to get the method name uh, all the method names then you can add a for loop uh, for each <coughs> for each on uh, this array right which will be of a type uh, method right a method class so method m is this and then if you want to print m dot how to get the name of each method you'll simply need to say cat name that's it so if you run this now this will show you the name of all the methods that are used inside the test class all right so we have created add print and show method over there now if i uh, change some of uh, the method to private right and now if i run this code let me know whether it will gonna print uh, the count of method as three and will get the method name or not because uh, what we have studied in access modifiers is that uh, private uh, access modifiers are not uh, accessible outside the class right but if you run it right now with the help of reflections you should be able to get the information of private ac private access modifiers as well right so this is a benefit of using reflection so uh, practically talking about uh, where these things will be used uh, let's say uh, in some time you'll be working on test ng or maybe you already have worked on test ng and you know that there are a couple of annotations if you have not gone through the test ng lectures i would uh, recommend you to first go through the test ng lectures or just try to understand the concept normally what we uh, do in test ng is let's say we create test cases so there is a test case for logging right which accepts a username and a password information right and then there is a test case for user registration right where we are registering a user with different uh, information right now this is my uh, test case this is my test case now both the tests are being executed uh, similarly there are 10 more tests that are being executed right now what i want that before any test is executed i want to add a log i want to add a log in my uh, log files uh, log files are uh, like with the help of log4j this is an api log4j uh, which will help us in generating the logs provided by apache so whenever you want to add logs you will be using log4j and you will be calling some methods like log.debug or log.info now i want that before every test should execute it should print over here that do login test executed then after that once it is finished the next it will do it will say do user registration test executed now what we need to do we need to call some functionality which should execute before calling our test cases 
right? So once you go through the test NG modules, you will get familiarized with something called as at the rate before method. Th these are some predefined annotations inside test NG, which actually defines the flow of your test. If you want anything to be executed before you call your test cases, you need to write that in uh, something called as before method. And here, how you gonna do it? Uh, let's say you may have created a method that says public void before method and in this you're going to pass on the argument of a method class. So when you call, when you get the method name over here, when you say m dot get name and when you uh, will going to say that uh, the test case that is test case executed is m dot get name so when you print this thing whichever test that is being called it will gonna print the name of that test case along with it right and at times you have hundred such test cases so you need not to write this thing again and again this will be called automatically. It will gonna get the name of all your uh, methods or test cases, and then you can add them in a report. Whenever all the test cases are executed, it will gonna add the name for all the test cases. You need not to hard code these things, right? So this will gonna look at it once we start with uh, the framework, the project, right? So this will gonna look at it later on. But yes, you can get any information from your class irrespective of the access modifiers being defined. You can get constructor information, the variables, you can get the class name, the method name, anything that you need from the class, any information you want to get from the class, you can get it with the help of this reflection API. So, uh, if you talk about these things, uh, there are two things that are done automatically. As soon as uh, you create an object of any class. This is a test class that we have created. As soon as you create an object of this class, the object of class uh, class is automatically created. This class class object is automatically created. Similarly, whenever you call any method, right, whenever you call any method, or a method gets executed, the information of a method is actually stored inside this method class. Right, this is automatically done. This is automatically done in Java. And similarly, whenever a constructor is called, then each and every information of this constructor is stored inside a class that is called as constructor. So there is a class called as constructor as well. So class, method, constructor, these are all classes as well, right? Now, in case, uh, let's say if I go back to this class and I change the return type of this to int and it returns a value 10 and change the return type uh, to double and it returns a uh, value 10 to 5, right? Now, in case uh, you, I'll make it public, in case uh, you want to uh, get the return types from a method, uh, you can do that thing as well. Uh, you can say return type is and you can say m dot get return type. And if you run this, you can see int double void. So show is having a void type, print is having a double, and uh, then add is having a int type. So this is how you can get uh, return types as well uh, with the help of this method class available in Reflection API. Now, uh, what all information that you can get from the method? Uh, let's say this add method has some parameters int a, int b. If in case you want to know how many parameters are there in the method, you can again uh, call something uh, like method uh, m dot m dot get parameter 
types, right? So uh, m dot get uh, returns the parameter type uh, for the executable this object represent as in uh, if you want to get how many uh, parameters are there, it, this actually uh, returns us. Uh, just give me a moment. There's a method m dot get parameter. This is the method. Yeah, get parameters. So get parameters will uh, gonna return an array of parameters object that represent all parameters to the underlying executable represented by this object. Means uh, that what all parameters are there in the methods in order to use this you need to uh, store it in an array of a parameter type so param equal to this and what you need to do you need to import this as well and all these things are coming from the reflect api right right and then in order to print uh, the parameter types then you need to create and and name it as params uh, for loop for parameter type param this and then uh, print param dot uh, let's say get name if I run this see uh, the add the return type int where we have two arguments uh, it's actually not printing the parameter name but it is actually telling you that the method has got two arguments and rest uh, two methods does not have any argument so it didn't return anything right so any information i mean be it, uh, if you say param dot you should be able to get the modifiers right the excess modifiers uh, Sorry, the access modifiers, uh, the name, the annotation type, right, parameter type. So all the all this information uh, from a parameter you can get. Normally, uh, we don't use parameter a lot, uh, but we actually use uh, the class information and the method information, right? These are the things that we look a lot, right? So at times when uh, generating logs when working on a reporting part these informations are very very important now you can see uh, two methods one is get declare method and uh, one is just get method right when we are running this it is returning as declared method as three right but if i call this method get method what it will gonna return us if i say uh, class dot get method get method it returns us an array and i'm going to print the length of that array and let's see what count it will actually going to return so if i run this it returns us a count as 12. now why 12 why 12 because this get method will actually returns the method which are inherited from any super class or super interface as well right so at times if you want to get uh, the method information of a parent class you can directly use this method get methods or in case you want from a particular uh, specific this particular class only then you should be uh, using declare method see excluding inherited methods right so that is uh, what you should be using it now same thing can be done with constructors as in uh, I'll create some constructor inside this class. So I'll say public test. This is the default constructor let's say. Without arguments we can create a constructor with arguments as well. Right. And now if you want to get the constructor information same way uh, what you can do I'll just comment out this code. For the time being, uh, yeah. right? So you can say class dot get uh, get declared constructor basically declared constructor, right? So 
Thus, declare constructor returns you an a constructor of an edit type, right? Constructor class constructor cons equal to this. And if in case you want to print uh, the length, you can say cons dot length will gonna return you how many constructors are there inside this class and run this. There are two constructors if in case you want to print the name so same thing you can follow for uh, cons constructor cons uh, sorry con and you can print con dot get name and if you run this uh, you're gonna see I mean, there are two constructors. It is actually uh, showing the package and uh, the class name and the constructor information over here. Right. So these uh, are the things, the information that we have looked for a constructor, a class, a method, right, parameter types. So entire information uh, of the things which are declared in a class, you can easily get it with the help of reflection. And we're going to see the practical usage of this at the time uh, when we are designing a framework, we are uh, generating reports. So we will be printing out our uh, test information, uh, the methods that's been executed. 90% of the time, you're going to get the information from the methods itself, right? So these are the things we will be practically implementing. All right. So that is all on uh, reflections. Thank you.